That is the obvious solution. But of course, Krauss is like, nah, let's do this. Yeah, but that was if he actually just told us it. Fuck off. The yells of the humans dancing around the gold reverberate around the underground room. But I mean, it's to be fair, I wouldn't be exactly rational in this situation. I wouldn't want to be in this situation because I don't know what I would do. Because that's a lot of gold and you can't just say, oh, I'd be fine. That is more money than 99.99% .99 of the population will ever see. In front of the pile of gold, they were arguing about how it should be sp split. I vote for even split, but... Come on. Yeah, we didn't think we'd find it. それを勝手に本にするなんて。取引できる立場だと思ってんのか。親父が死んでることを隠してるくせに。Yeah. It's the easiest way to get out of it, just split it even. Fair I'll take as much time as I want in loading this on a boat. Fuck off. Okay, Kraus. I know a guy. It's okay. <笑>それは容易に気づいたかも。確かにこの黄金の山には200億円の価値があるとしかしそれは換金を減ればの話だ。これだけの大量の黄金のない正体不明の隠骨と誰にも知られずに叱るべき例とで換金することが。Probably not Close enough. If it was a necklace or a ring, ex exchanging it for cash would be a manageable problem. However, to do that with several tons of unmarked gold that, would, uh, that couldn't be made public would be impossible for any normal person. Which is why you don't do it all at once. You do one ingot at a time or something like that. Well, even then it's like, mm, where'd you get this? Meh, I don't know. However, Krauss could do it. Among the several business friends that remained from Kenzo's generation, there were some who had black market ties and a lot of financial power. The billion yen which was tied to the cash card and that the golden witch had handed out had already been turned into cash by one of Kenzo's connections. However, none of the other siblings had any connections like that. Genji, get over here. They could have relied they would have to rely on Cross to exchange the gold for cash. ようやくわかってきたかね。親父殿のことを隠していたことは謝ろう。しかし、それを弱みにできるほど君たちは優位な立場にはないのだよ。あ、put <笑> Ava was gripping the gun so hard it looked like it might snap. The four guns that the witch had placed in this room were now in the hands of the relatives. Fucking Beatrice, I knew you predicted this. Just as the gold led their hearts astray, it seemed these guns had the magical power to turn their hearts into violence. Finally, a scuffle arose between Ava and Kraus. Off to the side not so he started arguing with Rudolph and his wife, and the grand underground VIP room was filled with thunderous jeers. I'd be leaving if someone picks up that gun. I don't want to be shot. After being forced to watch this scene for so long, Angie's face was starting to contort with pain. It was only natural after being forced to watch their abusive argument between her parents and her other relatives. It was painful for Leon, too. 
Leon would have to uh, would have tried to intervene, calm them if that had been possible. That would not have been possible. The gold isn't going anywhere. If you just take your time and think, you'll be able to resolve this. From what we've heard from Ava and the others, they need a lot of money before the end of the year. However, the billion yen cash card should be more than enough to pay for that. Since it could have handled their emergency expenses, they should con they could convert the gold to cash at their leisure, then just split it amongst themselves. Sure, maybe Cross was the only one capable of converting the gold. That might have given him an advantage over the other siblings. However, this gold couldn't be dealt with by an open means. In addition to attracting public attention, it would also lead to various legal problems. It was better for this secret money to remain secret. If they'd wanted to get the largest portions possible, they then they would have to all agree not to tell anyone about this gold. I'd fucking go public if I'm getting screwed. In other words, to maximize their profits, they needed a gentleman's agreement that all of them would keep the secret. Krauss did have a slight advantage. However, it was possible for the other relatives to refuse to cooperate and tell the world about the gold. And then, there was also the concealment of Kinto's death to consider. Krauss was an investor. He needed not only financial clout, but also a certain degree of public confidence. His advantage isn't big enough for him to act as a, uh, so overbearing. Of course. ただの子供の喧嘩だ。こんな光景を私たちに見せて何が楽しいってのよ。それともこれが新しい魔女の遊びってわけ。私たちが嫌そうな顔するのをどこかで眺めててニヤニヤしてるってわけ。By now, even I didn't have a clue who was showing us this for or for what reason. At the very least, it didn't doesn't look as though this new tale is overflowing with affection. No. Oh. At first, I thought it was a tale of a beautiful world where no crimes occurred since Claire had gotten past all of her regrets. But something is different. This tale is clearly filled with an ill will towards us. I'm sure of that much now, but I don't have a clue who would want to show us this. Again, probably burn. Uh, hello? Suddenly a loud explosion rang out. It didn't feel like the sound of gunfire. After all, most of the people living a normal life never hear that sound. Someone's dead. Probably cross. The sound of thick raindrops hitting the floor. There was no rain in this underground room. It was the sound of blood dripping down from Natsui's right eye. I swear to God! The bullet had gone in through her right ear towards the back of her head. Why? Okay, I swear to God, Ava, that is the second time you've accidentally gone off. Fuck off, you don't deserve to hold a gun. Second time. The gun which fell from Ava's grasp landed on the floor with a hard mag m metallic clink. Bum cross, I'm killing her. Right then and there, I just put a bullet in her skull. As though in response to that sound, Natsui's head slowly turned to face the ceiling. I don't care if it's a quote-unquote accident. Fuck off. You just killed my wife. Natsui flopped backwards. When the back of her head hit the floor, a red splash spread out beneath it, forming a single floor flower to adorn her dead face. There you go, Kraus. <laughs> Kraus howled, raised his gun, and ran at Ava. You're gonna die, bitch. Move, Hideyoshi. At the same time, Hideyoshi left between them. A scuffle broke out between the two men. You did what? What? <laughs> Yamelo, so you know, 
Kraus, who had just seen his wife killed before his eyes, had lost all traces of rationality in his expression. Oh, hell yeah, that makes so much... Sorry. I shouldn't say this, but I do the same thing across the city. I don't care. Fuck off. He was so furious that if he had knocked Hideyoshi aside and jumped today, but he might have torn her throat out. Yeah, I probably would. Understandable. Move it! Another explosion rang out. Hideyoshi's face was covered with blood. The two of them had been in fighting over the gun Cross held, trying to push it away from themselves. When the barrel had turned to the point to cross his chin, the sneering formless reaper master in the room of gold had swung its scythe once more. I swear to God! A line of blood trickled down from Cross's mouth. I didn't mean to. That's more believable if I didn't mean to. The two fell down with Cross's body on top of Hideyoshi. Letting out a cowardly cry, Hideyoshi backed away from it before Cross's body could cover him. Oh uh, yeah, if I'm the other siblings, I either A, run, or B, shoot them, because I don't trust them. Fuck off. We just happened to accidentally kill two people. As the pair of them broke down sobbing and repeatedly claiming that it was all an accident, Rosa and the others were unable to say a thing. The witch also watched the scene, but said nothing and appeared to be completely disinterested. I could use some extra gold. Maybe I'll attain to what I saw. Sit the fuck down. Oh no, I, I don't know. It's pretty dim in here. Rosa and Rudolph's gaze looked very cold and indifferent to Ava and her husband. You're the ones that shot him. Oh, no, I don't know, I don't know. Usually when I know someone's missing, I call the police immediately. Oh no, I could I could tip off the police in the world. Grab a gun. Grab a gun. Though Ava had been scratching at her head, overcome with emotions, her arm suddenly fell as though their strings had been cut. Grab a gun. Grab a gun before she can. Grab a gun. Grab a gun. Oh. 
Ava slowly walked forward, tapping on it and spoke. She's insane. As she played with the switch that would cause an automatic explosion at midnight, Ava spun around to face them, a crazed expression on her face. It was truly a mad inspiration. If they flipped the switch to the right and waited for tw uh, midnight, the 900 tons of explosion would wipe out the mansion on a trace. There wouldn't be even be remnants of the corpses. There would be no way to tell that they had died by gunshot wounds before the explosion. Jesus. <laughs> Shaking, Hideyoshi frantically searched for a counter-argument, hoping to re-repudiate re re Ava's mad idea. But he couldn't find one. If they blew everything out, the facts would all be muddled. They could make it look as though Kraus and Natsui had died in an explosion accident. <laughs> totally normal. <laughs> totally accident. <laughs> もう一つ事故が起こるだけの話だわ。ねえ、そうでしょ、あんたたち。筋書きは適当に考えるわ。とにかく私たちはたまたま明日の夜隠し屋敷にいた。そこで偶然爆発事故が起こってな、物がれた
あの女から受け取った10億円の入ったカードが黄金は運べるだけ運べばいいそれを別にしても私たちには10億円が入ったカードがあるわ3等分しても分け前は最低3億私たちの誰もがそれで十分に金策をしのげるじゃない嫌よ<笑>何がここにこうして200億円の山があるのにどうして3億こっちで納得しないのに I didn't kill anyone. I'm not settling for in 300 million. Go fuck yourself. Ava's face twisted in anguish and was met, met by Rose's cold, look of cold unconcern. Yeah. この黄金の山は好きにしてくれていいわあんた何をシャーシャーと協力する気はないの姉さん頭を冷静にして聞いてちょうだい私も姉さんも最も多くのお金を手に入れられる方法を提案するわ何よ素直に警察に特組合の末銃が暴発したと思って自首してほしいのバカ言ってんじゃないわよ私は嫌よ警察なんてさすがに事件がここで起こったとは言いたくないわね警察に黄金が見つかっちゃうそうねバラ庭園なんてどう雨が降っているから現場検証の時矛盾が発見されなくていいかもしれないどういう経緯で雨のバラ庭園で銃を持った兄さんたちと取っ組み合いになったかについてはそれこそ姉さんに言い訳を考えてもらうわ自分たちの罪を隠したいからって私たちとその取り分まで巻き込まないでやっぱりどうぞいいじゃない別に何十年も食らい込むわけじゃないだって事故なんでしょほんの数年で出てこられるわ罪を償ってきれいになって戻ってきたら姉さんの分の黄金50億を好きにすればいい嫌<笑>よ絶対に嫌よ Wait, you'd only be there for maybe 20 years or so? Come on 私たちが捕まったらどうなるのようちの人の会社はどうなるのよ Uh, well, uh, that's a fucking shame.、Uh, I can run it in your stead. Yeah, fuck it. Rose had never intended to go along with the idea <laughs> Ava proposed. Good. As far as the size of each person's portion went, no one had anything to gain from an explosion accident. By doing that, they could conceal Cross and Dante's his death. There is no other reason to do it. From Rosa's perspective, the ideal outcome would be for them to confess to, the,、uh, to their crimes without any unnecessary tricks. All she wanted to do was to change the crime scene from here to a different place. However, Ava didn't want to be arrested. Hmm, shame. She didn't like having her share, share shrink from 5 billion to 300 million. But even that was more than enough to cover the amount she had been trying to wring out of Krauss in the first place. She wanted to hide what had happened here, even if that meant、uh, blowing away 4.7、uh, billion yen. What would happen if they were arrested? The life, the company, and the trust that Ava had worked so long to build. Those were things that couldn't be bought back with money. So she wanted to hide Cross and Natsui's deaths, even if it meant by blowing up all 4.7 billion yen worth of gold. But from Rose's perspective, that was just irrational nonsense. Rose's <laughs> perspective, 
三人もの死に関わったらかなりの大事件だわおそらく休憩は死刑妥当なところで無期懲役軽くても10年以上は食らい込みそうねおとなしく自首しなさいよそうすれば不幸な事故がたまたま重なったことで済ませられるわ無論ケーキだって大したことはないジョージ君のことは安心して私たちでちゃんと面倒を見ておくわ姉さんの取り分の50億はきっちり手つかずで残しておいてあげるから安心して Ava ground her teeth and glared. The Rosa she knew should have been shaking and obeying her commands. And yet Rosa wasn't scared. Her blank expression. No, that slight smile was one that Ava had never seen before. It is the best. Yeah. So うちの人のことは関係ないでしょ私は逃げないわよお金を持ち逃げなんて絶対に<笑>絶対にしないわよ Rosa's once frigid face was filled with rage The two howling people pointed their guns at each other shouting insults at each other You could smell the gold、uh, gold rooms reaper、uh, slinking closer The smell of gunpowder the explosive smell of death filled the room Fuck. I swear to God. It's not Ava that's gonna be dead. I just fucking know it. It just never is gonna be. Oh, God. A bubble of blood dripped from Rosa's mouth. Thanks, Ava. Great, great person.、And、then she fell over lifelessly, like a mannequin. Eva! That wasn't a mistake. Oh, shut up. You said that last time. Oh my god. Ebanesa no Jua Saki Natsuhi san o Uta Toki Tamana Karani no Tatsu. Kiri, you're fucking terrifying. Sai sort and stena in the Kara. Do Hikigane o Hitemo, Sono Jude of Hitoa Korosena. Ansin. As Kyrie said this, she maneuvered the lever action with a、uh, practiced hand, and a smoke smelling shell、uh, casing was ejected. It hit the floor with a small metallic sound. That tiny sound had a disturbing ring to it. Rosa's hand was a little bit of 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 a ウシロミヤケオーゴンデンセツナンテノガデキチマイドデオヤジノトキミダテオキミヤサニナトウシロミヤケオーゴンデンセツナンテノガデキチマイドデオヤジノトキミダテオキミヤサニナトウシロミ
かわからない黄金の監禁だってそうだわきっとモロを出すきっかけになるわよ私たちにはどうにもならなかったあの女が現金化してくれた10億が私たちに手に入れられる唯一のお金なのよそして10億の山分けだけでも私たちには十分すぎるわそしてローザが死んでるその分け前はさらに増えたわ私たちは5億ずつを持って島か出られる Okay, this background music's absolutely unnerving. This needs to stop. So you could do it. Go go, Kankin Stein and the Luxa Stareva. Konosima de Okota Sabetimo, Nakata Kutaki. So you shkatena, Kokoniva. There is no longer any reason to worry about accidental discharges or people being shot to death on this island. I doubt that. Everything would be erased equally by the explosion accident. No matter what happened between now and midnight, the next day, everything would be rewritten by the explosion accident. よくの皮を突っ張らせるからよ自業自得だわ Wow, you're a great person しかしキリエさん何も打つことはなかったよローザさん家庭話せば分かってくれた話や打つ必要はあったのよだってローザさんだけが銃を撃ってないんだもんそれはどういう意味でかあなたたちの足元に落ちているクラウス兄さんの銃とエバネーさんの銃どちらも発砲済みだわでもローザさんの銃は引き金を引くだけで弾が撃ててしまうレバーアクションは慣れないとリロード難しいの素人じゃなかなかできないの She's terrifying. Oh, Anta! Yes. They finally realized what Kiri meant. Rosa had the only gun that could still fire, so I shoot, shot her first. Yep. Oh, how foolish we were. We, well, why didn't we realize sooner? I did. <laughs> it was obvious she wasn't going to let you live. She should have realized. We should have realized that there is a mechanism for erasing everything that happens on this island. Ava and Hideyoshi hurried to pick up their guns, and that lay at their feet. And didn't matter. Once you lower your head, you're gonna get executed. At the same time, fire spat out from Kyrie's gun once more. Fire again. Hideyoshi let out a short scream, clutched at his chest, and fell over face down. Ava fiddled with her lever action, trying to imitate something she vaguely remembered from a western movie. Just kick it outwards. Kick it out. But something seemed to be caught, and the still open lever didn't budge. <laughs> Kiri finished reloading with a fluid motion. The way she held it was, in, what, it was as innocent and, and sure as a kid playing with a square gun. With another heartless cry of gunfire, the puppet called Ava slumped down to the floor like a puppet with its strings cut. The cash card with a billion yen, which Ava had just grabbed from the witch. That alone was worth more than enough. 
Because of the 20 billion yen pile of gold everyone and sense of value had been skewed. Just a few million yen is enough for people to kill over. And this was a billion yen. Yeah, go fuck yourself. And you warned? <laughs> you killed three people for a billion. Yeah, sure. As Rudolph walked up to Ava's body, he found the card lying beside it and picked it up. どうせすぐ飽きるわ。それに私、トラブルで苦悩したり、それを乗り越えて無邪気に喜んだりしてるあなたが好きなの。<笑> ワタシとルドルフさんで友好に使わせてもらうわ。クラウスニーさんはあんたを紳士的に扱うと約束したわ。でも私はそんな約束をしていない。She pulled the trigger without a trace of mercy. When the ringing of the gunfire died down, blood trickled from the witch's mouth and she fell over onto the bed. Once again, Kyrie ejected the used shell casing. The four metal sounds of used shells hitting the floor seemed to symbolize the fact that Rudolph and his wife now possessed all shares of the gold. <laughs> この島からすべての仲良し。ローザ。まあ、こいつは。たまたまの成り行きだ。ね、ワッシェイム。勘弁してくれよ。兄貴と兄貴が喧嘩をして、ローザがそれに巻き込まれ。俺がひょいっと
私の子供じゃないのそういうことだよねあんなに懐いてたじゃねえかあいつお前のこと尊敬してるんだぜじゃあうまいこと言いくるめる言い訳を考えてねわたしはエンジェのことを考えるあなたはバトラ君のことを考
どの孫が次の当主にふさわしいかなんて話に急になっちまってよ次期当主はクラウスおじさんなのでは俺たち4人はみんな次期当主失格だとはよそれで俺たち親をすっ飛ばして孫から次期当主を選ぶなんて話になっちまったわけさ急な話で俺たちも大いに荒れてる向こうで兄貴たちはケンケンガクガクやってるぜ姉貴の金切り声が受話器越しにも聞こえねえかそそうですかおじい様がおっしゃることなら仕方がないですそれで僕たちはどうすればジェシカちゃんから順に一人ずつ呼び出しがあるぞ<笑>ちょっと待ってくれ<笑>ああもしもしトップバッターはジョージ君とジェシカちゃんだそうだジェシカちゃんは屋敷の客前ジョージ君は礼拝堂の前まで行ってほしいそうだいきなりのことで心の準備が全くありませんがテストって何ですか親父のやつめおかしなクイズみたいなものを作ったみたいだ。当主の心構えとは何ぞやみたいな沈黙らしいぜ。Even this strange test seemed only plausible once he heard that it was a sudden idea from Kenzo's. But even in that case, if he wanted to test them one by one, why wouldn't he call them all? Why would he call, wouldn't he call them out one by one? They should just have to wait in the rece reception room they go when they are called. Why would two people be called to different places at the same time? The plan didn't seem to make much sense, which made George feel as though he was missing something. Well, of course, he's not going to automatically. You're going to kill me, but come on. Oh, that's, that's low. なんの話だろうね。ジョージ君は孫の中で一番優秀だからね。何か特に話したいことでもあるんじゃねえか。ま、とにかくそういうわけだ。すぐに移動してくれ。礼拝堂の方には俺も行くことになってる。さっさと済
じいさまには勝てないんだろうけどなそういうことだね仕方がない、yeah, why not? 当主様の命令だからね従おうまず最初は僕とジェシカちゃんが呼ばれてる僕は礼拝堂へジェシカちゃんはお屋敷の客前だそうだ俺とマリアは追って連絡があると思うよここで待っててマリア、オオカミと羊のパズルなら得意。うん。じゃあ、俺たちはルスバンしてるぜ。うん。じゃあ、行ってくれよ。もう待ってるみたいだし。次期投手を孫の誰かにね。ま、私には交通号だぜ
なんだよずっといてねえなんだってずっと私の好きなルドルフさんのまま<笑>いて<笑>当然だろ俺がいつお前を失望させたよお前はそんな心配より祝杯をあげる時のシャンパンの銘柄でも迷ってろってんだ<笑>そうするのいいバトラ君が大事なのは礼拝堂前でジョージ君をやっちゃダメよ死体を見つけられたら面倒でしょああ分かってるその辺にうまく誘い出す雨の屋外でどうとでもなるさ西部劇の悪役じゃないんだからね<笑>メイドの土産とか最後に言い残すことはとかそんなことやっちゃダメよ Yeah sure I'll just execute my first born son Kyrie lifted up her gun again and pulled on the lever to eject the casing from the bullet she had, ki yeah, she had killed Goda with Wait, what? Why didn't she kill Ava? I thought she already did that. Ava was holding Hideyoshi's body and crying. She hadn't been shot at all. The bullet had scraped against the side of her head and missed. She hadn't been playing dead. She really thought she had been shot. When Kiria's gun spat fire, Ava felt something swift and fierce scrape past her head. Before feeling lightheaded and fainting. Then later on, woke up in the now silent room with the gold. She didn't check? Oh my god. The remains of her beloved husband lay beside her, and crowned not to Ian Rose's corpses. It was a room of death and piled up bodies. I'm gonna go kill Kyrie. When she had cried all she could over Hideyoshi's body, she realized that she still had something she needed to do. They're trying to use the bomb to blow up everything to bury this in whole island with an explosion accident. Of course. As Ava had expected, the switch on the clock was set to the right, which meant that it was de ac active. Ava moved to flip it to the left and stopped. That's right. As long as the switch points to the right, everything that happens will disappear in this night of illusions. Yes, this is an illusion. No matter what happens tonight, everything will become muddled and hidden away. When she looked at the table with the box of bullets, she saw signs that they had roughly removed the bullets from the box. It clearly showed that they planned to use that many bullets. I have to fight, if only to protect just the life of my precious son. The gun that I dropped when I was shot is stuck with the lever handle open. No matter how hard I pull, it won't open any further and it won't close again. Apparently a bullet had gotten jammed breaking it. It's just as Kyrie said. Loading a bullet is tough if you aren't used to it. Just get like Rosa's or uh, Cross's gun. Oh no, dude, Frudoff picked up uh, Rosa's gun. In Hideyoshi's. Hmm. Ah, in Hideyoshi's hand was Cross's gun, which he had been trying to pick up. Eva took it, prayed to her husband once more, one more time, and tugged on the lever handle. With a light metallic sound, the golden casing spun through the air, bounced off the ground. When she timidly tried to push the lever back, this time it returned to its original place without any resistance. There was another metallic clang. It was the sound of a new bullet being loaded. Poor Angie. 
You're not upset? Oh my god. Okay, okay, so you are pissed about it. In the game so far, various people had been su suspected of being the culprit or an accomplice. The only difference now was that Rudolph and Kyrie were those suspects. However, that was the most aggravating development possible for Angie. Even Leon was full of painful thoughts. Though the, so uh, though the solving of the epitaph, which was supposedly the only miracle that could lead to a game with no victims, had occurred. How ironic that the tragedy was not averted. Does this mean that we aren't allowed to have a future when we all are, are happy, happily returned from this island alive? Even if the epitaph is miraculously solved before the crime occurs. A miracle certainly will not occur. Those words which I had heard in one of the fragments Byrne had shown me raced through my mind. No, that's something Burn would totally do. Never mind. Yep, that's something Burn would do. Game Master got another Arakotua Mo. What does Nimo Wakati in this? Oh, she take a side. Oh, she take another. Kuna game of what I said in me said in this. Of course, no one answered Leon's muttered question. The game created a mock Angie continued emotionlessly with more terrible twists that didn't betray anyone's expectations anymore. <laughs> Hello, new music. Skinny,最悪のゲームを繰り広げればいい。猫箱の中の無限の可能性の中の一つだと言いたいんでしょ。好きになさいよ、好きに。私はこんなことでは苦しけない。1986年10月5日の真実をいつか必ず暴いてや
いけいかこれなら背後から脳天をズドンとやった方が慈悲があったい何もわからねえうちにズドンじゃあまりに無慈悲かと思ったんだがどうやら逆だとどうしてルドルフ王子さんあんなに優しかったおじさんがどうしてゴールズベッジこのことは忘れろ明日の夜にはすべてなかったことになっている With a quick use of the lever handle, he loaded another bullet. The casing of the bullet head that had pierced George's side fell heartlessly in front of him. Ava's gonna kill him, isn't she? Because he's pulling a Western movie villain and talking. Monologuing. Of course, George didn't have a clue what Rudolph was talking about. All he knew was that Rudolph wanted to kill him, and he had shown no traces of hesitation. The image George had of Rudolph as the ideal cool, joke-loving adult didn't match up with the Rudolph standing in front of him holding a gun. No, maybe it doesn't fit because it fits too well. Even though he has the same smile as though he's about to tell some hilarious joke, he's pointing a gun at me. Why would that kind, funny Rudolph do this? It made me feel unimaginably sad, and the tears flowed from his eyes. Yeah. Oh, hey, Battler. He bit down. Okay, that sounded like Battler. He bit down in the pain in his side. With the last of his strength, George threw his whole body into a roundhouse kick. Just fire. At the same time, fire spat from Rudolph's gun. The bullet pierced George's chest. George spun around as though he fell amidst an outpouring of blood. He moaned wordlessly, clutching bloodstained teeth. Clenching bloodstained teeth, the frigid gun was pressed harshly against his temple. <laughs> You shouldn't be surprised. Everyone's killing for money at this rate. <laughs> the ruthless trigger forestalled any further questions. Ava didn't save him. George's hands, which had been covering his wounds, dropped lifelessly. When Rudolph saw the last glimmer of life leave him, he sighed deeply and looked tired. <laughs> Rudolph looked up into the dark, rainy sky. The raindrops hitting him fell him full on the face, and laughed with an incredible, indescribable expression. His tongue hanging out. <laughs> Rudolph laughed. This was probably just the thing Kyrie had hoped for. It had taken some effort to kill George. Though he had been merciless, the last traces of consciousness in Rudolph's heart had probably slowed him down. However, now they had killed someone with his own hands, a turning point that few people ever reach. George had found... <laughs> George. Rudolph had finally awakened. awakened. No, he finally understood. Haven't I, haven't I driven dozens of poor fools into doubt with my earlier swindles? Several of these probably ended up bankrupt, and some of those pro might have hanged themselves. And I always laugh, saying there was none of my business. And that's all there is to it. 
The only difference now is that for the first time, I've dealt the final blow with my own hand. <laughs> Rudolph's evil laughter rang out. The laugh was so purely evil it was almost re reassuring. The fake evil that it covers up pangs of consciousness is far more repulsive to behold. If a man commits himself to an evil act, how much more pleasant and graceful it is than a man when a man is wholly devoted to his goal. In that sense, Rudolph's evil smile and laugh truly were pleasant and graceful. And so? Surely the brutal, bloody stage of the dining hall was also reassuring. A clang. A thud. A crack, a squish. A strange mixture of these sounds kept repeating over and over at the same tempo. Each time a red splash landed on the nearby di dangling tablecloth. That's so fog. What the fuck's wrong with you? Kiri asked this with the sort of smile any aunt might ask, make, to, uh, to make to her niece. Kiri asked this, and, uh, however, Jessica didn't answer. There was nothing particularly surprising about this. After all, by now, her nose was broken, her eyes had been smashed, her teeth had been knocked out, and not only her nose, but her entire face was now hardly recognizable as a fla face. Just a lump of bloody flesh. Jeez, what the fuck's wrong with you? Kyrie finally stopped her task of repeatedly smashing Jessica's face with the stock of her gun. Still sitting on top of Jessica, Kyrie tossed her gun to the side, pulled a compact out of her pocket, and looked at her own face in the mirror. Then finally, she realized that her face was covered by speckles of fresh blood. <laughs> What's wrong with you? With a muffled laugh, Kyrie shakily rose to her feet. Jessica wasn't moving. She had been convulsing a bit until a second ago, but now she was still just as still as a stone. <laughs> Oh, Kyrie pulled the tablecloth off and used it like a towel and wiped the blood from all over her body. However, instead of taking the blood off, it just smeared it around and did nothing to remove the stench of blood and death that covered her. When she got tired of rubbing the tablecloth against the blood, Kyrie walked over to the extension line telephone in the corner of the room. Then she dialed the number for the cousin's room in the guest room house. With the same smile as usual, the partly wiped splashes of blood still covering her face, Kiri finished her call to Battler. When she sat down to receive it, there was a small knock and Rudolph came back into the room. Oh, Thanks. Thanks, Rudolph. When Kyrie heard Rudolph's instant response, she favored him with an evil smile. Yes, the man she loved was the sort who could do it if he tried, without letting cheap emotions get in the way. Rudolph, 
ちょろい仕事じゃな親父がよく言ってたぜ男は人生で一度人を殺す覚悟を持って望む日が訪れるって常に相手を殺してでも生き残る覚悟を持ってよねお父様の言葉の中で一番好きな言葉よお次はどうする俺のライフルは血を求めてるぜ次は大仕事よバトラ君の説得おっとこいつは面倒だ引き金引かずに終わりたいもんだ私は気に入ってるのよエンジェとの三人家族の生活スタープでもどうしてもそれにバトラ君を加えたいというなら頑張ってねおうグーの根も言わせねえつもりだ大丈夫うまく騙すシナリオも用意してるぞ頑張ってね私もできることならエンジェの大好きなお兄ちゃんが爆発事故に巻き込まれないことを願ってるわ I can't tell if you're serious about them 分かってるさじゃあ俺は礼拝堂に戻るぜルドルフさんなんだバトラ君が納得しなかった分かってるその時はズドンだバトラ君は私との最高に抗議して家を飛び出すくらいに行動力のある子よ中途半端な丸め込み方で後日にいろいろと騒がれたり彼は私たちの命取りになる分かってな俺を信じろもしバトラ君が不信感を持ってると私が判断したならその時は私の手で殺すわ私の子供じゃないの分かってるだからキリエ一つだけ約束してくれ何もしバトラをうまく丸め込めて島から3人で出られたら出られたら<笑>バトラのことを二度と私の子供じゃないみたいなことを言うなお前は母なんだから頼む Legitimately. Ewa, Yak s o k u s t a n g i r Kiri shrugged and answered as she loaded bullets. Anatare Hidoe. Natasua, Yakso Kustangir, 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 Balor left the guest house under an umbrella. He'd been called to the area in front of the chapel just like George had been. Not even 30 minutes had passed since the time George and Jessica had been called out. Apparently, this test didn't last too long. Complaining all the way, Battler strolled off into the rain. Almost immediately, he was swallowed up by the darkness of the Rose Garden and passed out of sight. And then, let me guess. Piri Abe could be seen coming out from the darkness of the Rose Garden. I was going to bet and guess that Ava. Her right hand held a gun. Her left held an umbrella. Her inner pocket contained the master key ring she stole from Goda. Her right pocket had a handful of bullets. Her left held a knife she had taken from the kitchen. She is a carefully and perfectly outfitted murderer. Another bolt of lightning struck down from the swirling skies. It lit up only half of Kyrie's face. Her cheek was still covered with Jessica's blood. Under the eaves, Kyrie folded up her umbrella, smiled, and spoke to no one. Rudolph could be seen under the eaves of the chapel. 
He had hidden his gun in the nearby shadows and was now smoking a cigarette. He glanced over at the place he had stowed his gun. The cigarette smoke began to pleasantly cloud his mind. Battler isn't a kid anymore. He's an adult who can choose his path through life as he pleases. When animals grow up, it's normal for them to form a group and go on a journey. Humans are the only ones that keep treating them like, like kids even after they get big. He puffed out those words, along with the smoke. When Battler came, he didn't intend to voice those regrets of his. Rudolph had already determined to play the part of an evil murderer who kills for money. <sighs> At that moment, he heard the sound of someone stepping on the gravel. He looked up, thinking that Battler had finally arrived, but the sound had come from the direction opposite of the mansion. <gasps> oh, hey, but how's it going? I didn't do anything. That was curious. I, I'm just along for the ride. Spin it. I don't care. That, I would try that. With the face obscured by anger and tears, Ava slowly walked closer, her gun raised. Her husband had been killed right in front of her. She probably wouldn't even hesitate. Realizing that a gun uh, quivering with anger was pointed right at his cheek, Rudolph backed away. Knowing Ava's track record with guns, I'd back away too. As he pretended to back away, he approached the gun he had hidden in the shadows. Oh, I'm going to it was all Kyrie. As Ava had said, it really had been, it really had been a, a half-baked, pointless thing to say. Rudolph would have said anything if he thought it would calm Ava's emotions before she pulled the trigger, which she looked capable of doing at any moment. Then Rudolph's foot came in contact with his gun. Really, he's pulling that. Rudolph waved as though George was coming from behind Ava. Then Ava's attention turned in that direction. That idiot. My simple big sister has always been a sucker. Die. Gunfire. Then a bit later, the sound of something heavier than rain dropped, dripping into the cobblestone floor. It's obviously him dying. There's no way Ava's stupid enough to fall for that. Hey, you saw that coming when, uh, your husband got shot, now didn't you? The bullet fired went straight into Rudolph's chest. The bullet left Rudolph fired at Ava Miss, landing near her feet. You're an idiot. Oh yeah, it fires lower. <laughs> God damn it, Rudolph. 
He dropped the gun onto a puddle with a splash, it staggered backwards and leaning against the wall of the chapel. And this is where Battler's gonna die because he walks up and sees Ava killing his father. Thanks, Rudolph. Ava dashed up to him, kicked away the gun that had fallen into a puddle, and grabbed Rudolph by the collar. Oh, I killed him. I put him down like a dog. You're a little late. Ava, who said she has always been able to see through her little brother's tricks, also knew that Rudolph's final words as his consciousness began to fade thanks to the bullet wound were not a lie. An empty shell casing bounced off the cobblestone, and the fur furious gun barrel was pressed against Rudolph's forehead. Make me suffer a hell of a lot less. Something I actually haven't been checking. Do any of these people change? No, that's surprising. A bolt of lightning turned everything white. However, the wall of the chapel was stained blood red. A red splash, like a crushed tomato, came out from the back of Rudolph's head and covered the wall. Then leaving a red trail behind him, Rudolph sagged downward, sat on the ground, and fell over. Ava dashed off towards the bushes. She found George's corpse almost immediately, screamed, and broke down sobbing. Rudolph's bloody corpse was exposed to the rain that ran down off the eaves. His eyes were still wide open. A fist-sized flesh-covered hole was open in the back of his head, and his insides were exposed to the open air. Inside was a mixed jelly of flesh, brains, and spinal fluid. That goop which looked like someone had mixed it up with a spoon and dripped it from his eyes, nose, and ears, mouth, and hole in his head. Ugh. <laughs> Poor little Angie. Let me guess, this is the world where, uh, Ava ends up living at the end and that's the one where Angie's from? Is that how it's gonna shake down? Angie clenched at her head, sobbing and moaning. Her father had dirtied his hands with murder over money, and on top of that, he had faced such a cruel end, and Angie had been forced to see his corpse. It was hard to imagine how, imagine a more painful experience for her daughter to go through. Don't worry, she's about to see her brother go through the same thing. I'm totally fed up with this. It's completely meaningless. As if in answer to that yell, a black shadow appeared in a seat in front of them. Oh, hey, Burn. Or perhaps she had been sitting there the whole time. Maybe she just couldn't see her until she re we realized that she was there. It was, without a doubt, the back of Burn's head. <laughs> I'm watching the movie. The witch uh, turned around with bored eyes. As though the two who were yelling were the strange odd one, the strange ones. The games are like messages, or maybe more like a roundabout love letter. A single message can be conveyed over several games, but now we understand. We know that endless tales can seep out the seal of the sealed two-day cat box. And beyond that, I even know the culprit and the motive. That has already been revealed, and it has nothing to do with this game. 
私たちは二人とも得ているんですだからこれ以上このようなゲームを繰り返す理由はないはずですもしこれがあなたと私たちのゲームだというなら私たちはすでに答えを得ているゲームは終了していいはずですうっさいわよあんた Thanks, Lambda Delta. 静かにしろってベルンが言ってんでしょ Another shadow appeared next to the seat next over, turned around and scolded the pair. Who is an ow ow over there? もう惨劇もクライマックスだわ。生き残るのはどっちかしら。I mean, I'm fairly certain this is gonna be where Ava lives. Burn isn't the game master. Then who is? Could Claire have created this cruel tale? Or are there even more witches playing around with this cat box? The guest house was wrapped in silence. Oh, good, now it's time to go kill little Maria and Nanjo. Fucking awful. Oh, and Genji. And Kumasawa. This is horrible.